Hello everybody, this is Danilo from PeaceFinancism.com, Liberty.com, the Conscious Resistance Network, and the Voluntary Virtues Network. And I wanted to discuss um, a topic of conversation that I got into with a friend recently, uh, who she went to India and she was amazed by the amount of poverty she saw and how people you know barely had enough money to clothe themselves to feed themselves and were you know desperately trying to sell her something and begging for money and things like that and as well as uh you know when i'm hanging out with her and her kids because we do the homeschooling um she saw a man that was asking for money and she gave him money and I thought that was interesting and I, I it had me thinking about something which is how do we best help those in need and to me this is very closely related to economics and incentives right the messages that we put forth um, and how we influence other people's actions. So if people get the idea that if they ask for money, they will receive money, what incentive does that engender? Does that engender self-reliance, independence, or does that engender dependence and the entrenchment of poverty? which lends itself to the idea of the welfare state. Well, actually, before I even say that, I would say that it is charitable and compassionate to give your possessions and your earnings to other people, if you so choose, to help them. Out of your love for them, your empathy, for their particular situation. That is compassionate, that is charitable. What is not compassionate is to give other people's stolen money that was obtained at the point of a gun. Now, what I'm referring to here is the welfare state. This is not compassionate. This is supporting the initiation of force. This is supporting the state and what it entails in the essence of the state, which is the initiation of force. So it's a very simple concept. So giving away one's own possessions, doing what you will with your own possessions is fine. It's voluntary, it's consensual, it's peaceful. If what you are doing or what you are advocating is the initiation of force or threat of violence enacted upon other people to achieve your ends, that is no longer magnanimous. That is no longer to be enviable. That is actually the essence of evil, of wickedness. And no political euphemism can change that fact. If you call theft and extortion taxation it doesn't change the fact the rules or the laws of morality of universal morality cannot be changed or subverted by popular vote there is no number of people that can alter the universal laws of morality I think this is a fundamental idea that um, many advocates of the state must understand is it doesn't matter the size of the population. If it is immoral and criminal for an individual to do what the state or agents of the state claim the right to do, this is not logically consistent. If it is immoral and criminal for the individual, it is immoral and criminal for the, an agent of the state 
to claim otherwise is to be co committing innumerable logical fallacies, including the appeal to antiquity and the appeal to force and the appeal to popularity, among others. Which is exactly why democracy or representative democracy or a republic are immoral and founded on the initiation of force. So, if you want to help the poor, if you want to help those in need, those who are without food, without clothing, without shelter, what is the best possible way to help them? Number one is to be charitable, give your possessions to them. That's not immoral, but I would not say that's the ideal way to help people. Because again, it still engenders dependency on handouts. Even though they're your handouts, they're still handouts. And uh, it's exactly why when you go to a park, they say don't feed the animals because then they will keep coming back for more and they will lose the ability to survive on their own in the wild. Right? When you create a dependent underclass of people who rely on handouts, you're crippling them economically. You're condemning them to poverty because the incentives are twisted. Now, private charities have different incentives than the welfare state, naturally. Um, but So what is the best way you can help these people? My approach is that of education, spreading ideas, self-ownership, property rights, non-aggression, spreading information, right? There's one objection that I often get, and I think people from the liberty movement often get, which is, you're all talk and no action. You're just words. All you're doing is talking. You're not doing anything. Which is very strange because every achievement, every invention, every creation that we hold dear, that was, was created by humans, was first an idea. It was a concept in the mind of the inventor. Words do retain their power to move mountains. Words can affect actions. Words can change paradigms. <laughs> when we begin to underestimate the power of words or to devalue the power of words, what are we replacing that with? The power of force? Brute force? The guns of the state? What are you trying to say? When you begin to censor other people for having alternate ideas that you don't agree with, you are becoming like the state. All ideas can be put forth. Not all ideas are equal, but all ideas can be put forth. And that is the best test to establish the validity of a particular idea is let it go free. Let it be tested in the minds of the people. If you like communism, if you like socialism, if you think the state is a necessary evil, let that idea go. Spread it into the ether. Let it compete with the philosophy of other of other ideas, of other nonviolent, peaceful ideas. And we will see which ideas reign supreme. I think the moral evolution of humanity is clear. We are trending towards peace. We are trending towards less violence, less crime, cooperation, collaboration. 
technological comfort like we have never seen. And this is a beautiful thing. And I think this will continue. So the worst thing you can do to a bad idea is to censor and suppress it. That's how you foment rebellion and revolution and violence. And that is not the way. Thank you for listening. This is Danilo from PeacefulAnarchism.com, TheSeedsOfLiberty.com, TheConsciousResistance.com, and the Voluntary Virtues Network. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.